everyone, this is David Stark from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Today, I'm joined by Nick Sasso, the writer, director, and star of Haymaker. We're going to talk to Nick in just a second, but first, let's check out the trailer. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Let me know when you lace them up again, kid. You used to be something to see. Any advice? Yes, go home. You own me big time. I got nothing to prove. I know you don't. Do you? Hey, Nick. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. How's it going? It's going well. How are you? Great, great. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking some time. No, thank you for thank you for talking to me. Uh, this this film was interesting. Like, it, I thought this would be like an action film because I didn't read anything about it, and I was like, wait, this has a lot more kind of style, and you know, it has a lot more uh, you know of an upbeat music, and then the colors were very kind of vibrant and bright, and I was like, this this feels thank very you. different. Um, thank you, thank you. And I know I know from your interviews, you, you know, that's. I think that's kind of what happened in this film. You're like, I'm going to make this film about a retired Muay Thai fighter. And then kind of as it developed, you know, you brought in some, you know, other I don't know, human elements is probably the wrong word, but maybe some more drama and some more, you know, of the relationship. I guess, how did that all happen? You know, what was the original inspiration for this film? And I, I just love to hear more about it. Yeah. Well, you know, um, first of all, I appreciate what you're saying about the movie. You know, I think that one of the things that, you know, I, I heard Kevin Smith say once in an interview that uh, him and his wife, um, think of Casino as like a warm blanket movie, you know? And so I think that there's, that's just such a great way to summarize some of the movies that I respond to. And so that I think somewhere in the back of my subconscious, I was looking to make some sort of a warm blanket movie that had a certain feeling and a certain, um, a certain traveling aspect to it, not just in terms of actual locations, but in terms of just progression and not sort of being central to one location. Um, you know, in terms of making it, you know, as you, as you probably know, is that, you know, we were a really scrappy, low budget movie, you know, we made this movie for, for, for very little bit of money. And um, in order to do that, it was a question of like, how can we make this feel big and how can we feel, make it feel expansive? And a lot of that was taking advantage of connections and relationships that we had, um, be it through Nomi in, um, in Greece and in Mexico and Brett Plavacek, the, um, the fighter, one of the fighters in the movie and his connections overseas. Um, so, and another piece of that is just, you know, in terms of my own experience training Muay Thai boxing uh, for so many years while trying to get a movie made. And when it, when those other movie made, other movies never really got off the ground, it became a question of like, like I really have to like, what can I do? You know, like, well, I can do this particular thing, which I, I don't feel like I've really seen on screen the way my fight friends and I, um, uh, think it could be done so it kind of started there and then I also realized I didn't want to just do a straight uh, fight movie I wanted to do a movie that was for as many people as possible so what you know what could kind of make those connections and those interpersonal relationships different fresh like we haven't seen before while sort of playing into some of the old familiar tropes you know no, definitely. I'm really glad that you brought up, uh, you know, how do you make it look big? Because that's one of the things that kind of struck me about this film. I mean, it's an indie film, but you've got the, you know, the club scene that starts out with, you've got these like bright lights and this full venue. And I was like, wow, that like, how did they do this on an indie budget? And, and you've got, you know, the, some fight scenes and, and other similar types of situations where it just, like you said, the film feels much bigger than, you know, I guess punching above its weight class would probably be a, a good that's analogy great, for that's it. Great, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, like, I, you know, I don't know. I, a lot of it is, you know, I think I spent so much time in post-production as a visual effects artist. I spent so much time sort of, I think so much of movie making is, I think you've heard Christopher Nolan talk about this is like, we're illusionists end of the day, you know? And so there's all sorts of things you can do, uh, you know, post uh, while you're shooting and after shooting that kind of, um, I don't want to say tricks the viewer, but kind of suggests certain things and achieves certain things. And yeah. so I knew going into this, that my flame background, which is a, a, a software that uh, handles Autodesk software. And those guys were great. They sponsored me with, with some, some equipment and gear. 
um, that I'd be able to go in there and do things that you couldn't do in pre-production or post-production, even in terms of building walls, building sets that you know weren't there uh, in terms of the color treatment, not only doing great color work at film, work, film workers in Texas, but then also bringing that back and retouching everything, adding lusters, filters, and what have you, so that the, the movie had that sort of feel, that sort of luster. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of like the way Zemeckis movies feels, the way the way uh, Casino feels. You know, I wanted the movie to have an aesthetic, hyper real feeling that kind of allowed you to kind of drift in and out of like what is what is what is it? That I'm, it's like a fever dream kind of a thing, maybe. You know, I hope. <laughs> I hope. You know. Yeah, no, I think I think fever dream is a good way to describe it. Uh, it definitely, <laughs> it definitely feels like you know there's a lot happening, um, and then you know, you kind of focus on your relationship with with all this noise surrounding. I think that's part of it is is you know both of your characters kind of have a lot going on, and and you know the relationship mm -hmm. develops in this very complicated situation. And I think that's yeah. uh, thank you. Yeah, thank and you. um, you know, so you took on a lot in this film. I mean, not only did you kind of have to get it made, you, you wrote, directed, and starred. Uh, you know, what was that like? And then also, I guess you also have the unique, you know, difficulty of you're also a fighter. So you have to stay in fight shape while you're directing and while you're trying to get the thing made. I mean, how did you do it all? I can't even imagine. Yeah, well, it, yeah, thank you. I mean, it was out of necessity, really, end of the day. You know, like I said, I've always wanted to do this. This is something I've been working towards for a really long time. So um, I would have loved for some of the you know, those roles to be worn by other people, but I, I I sort of had to do it, and so it just became a question of like, let's let's just roll up our sleeves and get to it. You know, with regard to the training stuff, that was a huge the the weight fluctuation. You know, putting on weight was great, eating cheeseburgers and what have you, <laughs> throwing my hair out for the first time, um, and then you know training for it. We had breaks, you know, and I I just remember like like most film lovers, lovers out there, you know, you, you know, the legendary stories of Raging Bull, right? And you know, like, yeah. you hear something, oh, where Tom Hanks and Castaway, they're like, oh, you take a break in shooting. I'm like, well, that'll be great for us because we don't have the money to keep shooting. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, while I'm raising money, I'll start, you know, I'll, I'll go to a dietitian, I'll get all that, all my, you know, my cardio, I'll get it all dialed in. And so it really, that's one of the reasons why it took so long to, to get the movie made is because, you know, we didn't have the resources to finish it when we started. Yeah. It was really a question of like, let's get out there and, 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 and if we shoot, if we can shoot the grease segment, maybe we can have a piece from that that we can use to kind of keep the ball rolling. Um, yeah. So there was like a whole host of challenges as, as a result of that. You know, yeah. Sure. It sounds, it sounds like a lot of very unique challenges. I mean, some, something, you know, some things do seem relatable to the normal Indies, but then you've got kind of this extra set of, of difficulties as well. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. speaking of getting this film made, it's been, you know, I, I think it what it's been four years since you yeah. started working on it. Uh, it yeah. was kind of, I don't know if luck is the right word, but the timing just works out that you're coming out in theaters and digital. Um, you know, was that just, did you just try to get this thing out there and just kind of happen to be right around when theaters were opening up or did, were, you, were you trying to hold on to this until, uh, you know, it looked like maybe some sense of normalcy was going to come back to this world? No, it really, I mean, honestly, I, you know, a lot of people worked with me, a lot of producers, were, you know, wanted this movie shortly after we finished editing it. Um, but I knew that like part of the look of the movie was the retouching and the visual effects work. So it was a whole year before that work got done. Um, and so it, it just sort of timed out. The timing just happened to work out um, when we were ready to roll this movie out, get everything cleared, that it kind of lined up. And I, I also like to think that the timing for this is um, hopefully good. I mean, hopefully audiences are, um, you know, hopefully audiences are entertained by this movie. I, you know, I know that there's been like, lack of production a little bit of a hole so hopefully we can help you know fill that gap and and uh, just entertain some folks you know i think it definitely helps that you've got kind of a, a movie that travels the world when when a lot of people are stuck at home <laughs> i think that uh, i think that will help <laughs> it's crazy yeah because when i think about it, watching the trailer or the, even the movie i was just thinking myself oh my god it's like i just i can't imagine now traveling without you know feeling a hyper sense of, of, of paranoia <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I think it's going to be an adjustment for everyone. Uh, so you're, you know, you, you took on a lot, and you're, you're the main star. But the you know the other star in this film is Nomi Ruiz, who is just you know she's I hadn't heard of her. You know, I'm I'm out of touch with anything popular, so I hadn't heard of her. And you know, her performance was was really fun. Like she kind of had that diva mentality, which I think was really fun to have on there. And also, I, I imagine her music inspired a lot of the music because the music in this film was just really kind of 
propelled the the film forward. So, you know, how did you how did you find her? And you know, what it sounds like she maybe contributed a lot to this movie. Oh yeah, I mean, first of all, couldn't have done it without her. You know, Nomi was also a producer on the movie. Um, brought her in early on. We met through a mutual music friend uh, when I was living in New York at the time, um, Marcos Garcia, a Chico man, otherwise known as Chico man, who's also got some um, music in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, you know, when I wrote the script, I was thinking, you know, wouldn't it be great if if Nomi would do this. I knew her peripherally through her music and I had a sense of her stage presence and, and her, her chops as an artist. And uh, the, the more I wrote it, the more I started being closer to actually getting in touch with her, the more I said, oh my God, she has to do this movie. So <laughs> when, when Marcos connected us, I, I, she was like, oh yeah, send me the script. I said, can we please meet? Because I, I didn't want to just send the script and then like, you know, have it just be about the script. So we got together and I basically just acted out the movie like you know, ridiculously over lunch, whatever it was. And uh, she was really interested. And I said to her too, you know, I really wanted her to be engaged in the whole process. I wanted her to feel like a part of like a contributing producer, really like if anything felt off to her, if there were any things that she felt um, needed to be changed or advocated for, I wanted to be open to that. And we had a great working relationship, I think throughout the, the process of making the movie. And I think she's so key. I mean, having her music and her performance and like seeing who she is um you know as this performer in the movie i think just adds to the to the to the um the depth of like the story you know you see these, these this guy who can really fight and this this uh, performer who can really sing and really dance and and i think to, together those are that's kind of a fun combination you know our original plan actually was kind of to shoot it a little bit like the safety brothers heaven knows what we were going to do it a little bit more docu-narrative Mm -hmm. um, but we brought our producer in Andrew Vandenhout and he was like, let's slow this down. Let's really, you know, dial it in and try to calculate this. And I'm glad we did because I think you end up with the movie we have, you know, which, which I think we're both, we're both pretty proud of. You know? Yeah, definitely. And I, you know, I agree that she added a lot there, you know, one of the early scenes where something really terrible happens to her and then she kind of has to let it go because she has to go back on stage and she has to kind of transform back into her stage presence. I thought that was a very powerful scene. Like I you know, kind of watched that and, you know, you're thinking, you know, yeah, she has to go back on. And if you're in the audience, you have no idea what's going on, but she has a lot that happens in a very short amount of time. And I thought that was yeah. a, such a smart start to this movie. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, I, I know you have a hard stop uh, about now. So I uh, just wanted to, you know, the movie comes out January 29th, 2021 in theaters and digital. Um, you know, you're, you're promoting the film uh, after, after the kind of the film is out, what's next for you? Do you have any, I guess you have fights on the horizon. Do you have uh, other, yeah, other yeah, ideas you know, and I movies? I do. I have a bunch of things in the hopper, um, awesome. but I will say this: that um, I've seen a lot of UFOs since I moved to Los Angeles. <laughs> Excellent! Oh, I can't wait to see that too. <laughs> that sounds that, totally fun. That, that might be the inspiration for the next movie. We'll see. Perfect. Hey, you know what? If you if you go up there and fight some aliens and, and <laughs> using your Muay Thai, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> I'd, I'd watch that in a peace. second. All about peace, man. I'm all about peace. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and, and thank you thank for you. for making this movie. It was it, you know it's always fun to have a refreshing kind of different film uh, pop in the you know into the reviews and, and out I into really, the world. So really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Take care. That was Nick Sasso talking about Haymaker. It's coming to theaters and digital on demand on January 29, 2021. So you can check it out whichever way you want. You can go to the theaters, or you can watch it at home. Uh, if you'd like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot and make sure all my new interviews go straight to you. And as always, please go to watchyourpast.com for all your movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Thank you. Yeah.